Today, we'll find out how much damage can a processor receive and at the same time remain functional. Today, there will be a gas torch, a drill, and even a grinding machine. This time, I bought even more old but working crappy processors for Socket 775, mainly Celeron D2004, which, if it dies, it won't be a pity. I also have more modern processors on Socket 775, but they'll be a snack. As you can see, the SMD components in most processors are the same, probably because there are six identical processors on the left, but that's not important. What do you think? Will the processor work without these SMD components? Well, let's find out. I'll run the processors on this cool overclocking motherboard, which is capable of lying in the shed and being a home for rats and spiders. The nest is already here, by the way. The nest is like new. I hope today we'll break some contact. It's time to assemble the computer on the table. I even splurged so much that I bought memory for this disgusting PC. As some uncle said, volume wins races and frequency sales memory, or was he talking about torque and horsepower? It doesn't matter. We don't have any torque or horsepower. We only have a disgusting PC which is assembled from junk that I managed to find. Well, let's start with small steps. Bite off one capacitor and see what comes of it. That's right. This is when you have a higher education in dibbleism, and at the same time, you are the lucky owner of a non-standard set of chromosomes. We put the CPU and see if it works or not, and it definitely works, so let's take a real bite. I'm a real jeweler in this matter. And it works again. Let's try again. It works, and another one. It works again. It's not funny why it still starts. Capacitor after capacitor, I mercilessly pulled out in hopes of breaking this processor, but the more capacitors I uninstalled, the more confident I was that the processor would be able to run without any of them. Absolutely everything removed. Hopefully it won't catch fire. Bomb has been planted. And it started. I'm almost surprised. And works fine, by the way. Why does the processor even need these capacitors? Who knows? Write about it in the comments. And now we will try to check something with this processor. The CPU has a maximum temperature of 61 degrees. I suggest scalping it and replacing the thermal paste, and see how this changes the temperature of the CPU. Oh, before I forget, let's freeze one processor with water in the refrigerator. Let's see how our processor reacts to freezing. It'll lie for 24 hours in the fridge. Processor scalping. Now, I will teach you this craft. I once did a tribute procedure and had some good success in this craft. All we need is some kind of sharp and thin blade to cut the glue on which the thermal distribution cover is held. A knife is not suitable for this business. This kind of blade would be better suited. I drive it under the cover in the hope of cutting off my finger, but I had no success. Now I have to turn the thermal cover right and left relative to the textilite. It sits too tightly. It is somehow difficult to move it. My god, what is this? Why does it not fall off? But this should not be done. There is a possibility of leaving the crystal on the thermal cover. The damn cover. Why does it not come off? What the hell? That's why it was so difficult. The processor was soldered. Definitely didn't expect that. Only liquid metal is better than solder in terms of heat transfer. So, if I apply even the most expensive thermal paste to the crystal, I'll get a worse result than with solder. But, once I took off the thermal cover, let's see if the processor will work without it. Oh shit, I dropped the radiator. Need to be more careful. And next time I need to drop the anvil with all my strength. But, without the cover, the processor does not work, either because the clamp is not enough, or the processor immediately overheats. More likely the second, because the computer turns on and after two seconds it goes out. But I want to be 100% sure that the problem is only overheating and not clamping. So I decided to slightly modify the thermal distribution cover of the processor so that the crystal could be seen with the naked eye and the clamping was normal. That's why I decided to cut off the top of the thermal distribution cover. I still have to look for a more ridiculous idea. But I coped with this task. Look how nice it looks. Even if you take it and hang it on the neck, and the neck on a rope, and the rope on a tree, and the legs on a chair. No, it's still a case of overheating. Pressing it down is already normal, and the result is the same. But the geometry of the socket and the same radiator does not allow you to reach the crystal with the radiator. There is a second option. I know for sure that the usual thermal paste under the cover of this processor, and the thermal paste has already dried up a long time ago, 55 degrees has this processor at maximum load. This is what I said, the usual thermal paste. Now I will change it and we will see the result. 
Here are the temperatures before and after replacing the thermal paste. The result is 10 degrees worse. Maybe it's because the thermal paste is bad, and even if the thermal paste is good, I don't think that the result will be much better than before scalping. By the way, here are the results of the Pentium with solder and thermal paste. Let's see if our Pentium can withstand a gas torch. I don't know what its temperature is, but I know that the minimum there are 700 degrees. The micro circuit is puffed up. I guess I overdid it a bit, so let's check. Put the CPU, the thermal cover on top, and the CPU has completely died. The processor seems to have stopped heating. God bless this hero. And what's up with our frozen friend? It's been more than a day, so it's time to defrost the processor. Let's help the processor a little to get out of the anabiosis. That's right, the CPU looks fresh and rested, and it definitely works. It's obvious. Overclockers, cool processors with liquid nitrogen, and it generally has a temperature of negative 200 degrees, and the CPUs remain operational. Let's now see if the CPU can work with the hole. Suddenly it can work! Oh no, my roof is already completely gone. The processor does not heat up at all. The next experiment is how much silicone can be cut from the silicone substrate. And at the same time, the processor remains operational. I took sandpaper with a gradation of 2000 and started to rub off the silicone. Now, you can see that something has rubbed off from the corners. Let's check if it works or not. <laughs> it works. I sanded it harder. I think you can see it works. And here I've been rubbing it for a very long time and I'll tell you that it's not easy to wipe it with 2000 sandpaper. It's not an easy task and takes a lot of time but I don't have a higher grid of sandpaper. And it obviously works. I'm tired of messing with it. Now I'll sharpen it properly and see if it'll work or not, but unfortunately, due to my laziness to work without sandpaper, the silicone did not last and became covered with cracks. I'm almost 100% sure that it's not working. Just like that, it doesn't even heat up. Now let's see if the processor will work if we boil it for a little, for at least 10 minutes. looks like it just went to the bath. The contact pad turned white. I somehow think that it's working. Let's check. Ah, uh, no, it died. I even wiped the contacts from plaque, but it did not give any result. Although this time it seems to be warming up. Now let's try to send the processor to Valhalla with the help of overheating on the computer. This Pentium has a maximum temperature of 105 degrees. Then the computer turns off. And now look at what the Celeron that I boiled is capable of. The boiled water was only 100 degrees, and this processor itself is capable of working up to 124 degrees. Now I'll overheat it until it dies. And again, it's not as simple as it seems at first glance. After 95 degrees, the processor drops the voltage, that is, it starts throttling, and at the 125th degree, the computer turns off. I overheated this processor 33 times, 27 of which were continuous, that is, immediately after overheating, I immediately turned on the computer. And what do you think? It's, it still works. I tried to ignore the temperature in the BIOS, but it still turns off at 125 degrees. Probably it has some kind of internal protection. Let's see what happens if you pull out the processor while the PC is working. It just freezes. The next time it's turned on, it works as before. Let's try to remove the RAM on the PC that's turned on. The PC also freezes, but if you turn it off and put the memory stick back in, everything works fine. Now, turn off the power to the CPU. It's also okay. 8-pin video card power supply, also nothing. Let's now find out how many contacts we can block, and at the same time for the processor to work. I closed one. It works. I found on the internet the power supply diagram of the processor for socket 775. Let's close these upper contacts. I closed even more than I wanted. Let's see if it works or not. It works! We raised the rates! You know how difficult it is to stick tape on these damn contacts. Minus nine contacts. It works. Let's stick these. This is how it looks. It doesn't work. It's because I didn't look at the diagram the right way and closed the wrong contacts. It was necessary to close the contacts from another angle. Like this. Minus 27 contacts. Works. Minus 45 contacts. Works. Minus 120 contacts, works. Minus 161 contacts, 
works. Minus 317 contacts. I'm already quite surprised. Minus 401 pins. But how is this even possible? I, I taped almost all the power contacts. I taped six more pins, and that 407, there are 368 pins left. More than half of the processor is taped, and it continues to work. All the other power contacts, if you look at the diagram, are not very convenient, and if I try to tape them, I'll need a psychiatrist. So let's complicate the task for our processor by uninstalling the capacitors. If it works even without them, I'll be very, very surprised. Well, finally it did not start. I already thought it would work and say, Stop doing it, you fool! I will live forever! Let's free some contacts and see if it'll work. That's how many contacts can be left taped to get it working again. But look what we have here. The temperature is minus 57 degrees and the voltage seems to be throttling the processor. I have an idea. But it just froze. If you unlock all the contacts, the voltage and temperature became correct. But I want to check a little more. Why these processors are so fat? Let's trim them on a whetstone and see if it'll work or not. This is what our processor looks like now. It seems that I overdid it a bit here. Now it's much more difficult to put it on the contacts of the socket. It becomes crooked and never straight. Does not heat up and obviously does not work. I poked it 20 times on the socket, but without results. Our patient has left. Hope you had as much fun watching this video as I did. Subscribe and we will meet very soon.